In this video, you will get a full self-taught curriculum that will teach you everything you need to know for software development. When I was learning how to code, I went through a lot of processes. I went through Python, I did Codecademy, I did a whole bunch of random stuff that if I did correctly, I would have been a self-taught developer in four to six months. And right now I'm on my eighth or ninth month and I'm just getting finished. So I made a curriculum that would have sped up the process. So I hope you find that valuable. And yeah, let's start with the first course. So the first course that you'd probably want to take as a self-taught coder will be CS50. Everyone and their mother says, take CS50, take Harvard CS50. It's the best thing. And honestly, it lived up to the hype. You learn everything there is to know about computers and it is an amazing way to start off your programming journey. I can't lie, it is difficult and it's gonna challenge you a lot as a new coder. Now, one thing to note within CS50, it's a mix of theory and application. So what that means is that not only will you learn how a program works, so not only are you gonna learn how computers work and how algorithms work, but you're also learning programming language. Based off the top of my head, we learned Python, JavaScript, C, HTML, CSS, and Flask, I think. But you're getting a good amount of content within a free course, and it is a great place to start your programming journey. And once you're done CS50, you'll have a good understanding of how programming works. Like, you're not going to be an expert, but you'll get at least the basics of what a program is. So once you got that done, you're going to want to start specializing in something. So this is a software development curriculum. So the thing you'd want to start off with after CS50 is HTML and CSS. Again, everyone says learn HTML, learn CSS if you're a software developer. And this is an important course if you want to be a software developer because HTML and CSS is in everything we do as programmers. Now, this isn't really a programming language. It's more of a styling sort of language where it's just designing websites. You're not really using math. You're not really using syntax or programs to make the stuff. It's more basic things. And that is why a lot of people start here. There's a ton of resources online for free, such as free code camp, code Academy. Just pick one. Don't, don't worry about what it is. Just pick something where you can actually apply what you're learning and you're going to learn the same thing as everyone else. So you learned HTML and CSS. Now it's time to learn a real programming language. Personally, I recommend JavaScript. There are software developers that choose Python. Both are great languages. I truly don't care. Each person has their preferences. Just pick one and start learning it. JavaScript is quite difficult and this will take a bulk of your time learning. I'm talking three months of the five or six months that you'll be learning simply because it is your first programming language. And I'll be honest with you, after months of learning this myself, I still don't get it completely. If you talk to any developer, there's still always something new that they are learning. Now within this JavaScript section, I also put React as a follow up to JavaScript. If you don't know what React is, all it is is a framework of JavaScript. So it's a version of JavaScript but it's more of a mix between HTML and JavaScript. It's a high-end language that many developers use and a lot of jobs hire for that job. Now you'll want to learn JavaScript before React simply because JavaScript is in React, but React isn't in JavaScript. And if you know some JavaScript, learning React becomes much easier. Now again, the contents, now the contents where JavaScript and React can be learned are Free Code Camp, Code Academy, and YouTube. Again, it doesn't matter. Just find a course where you can actually code with the instructor or have a place where you can program. It's time to learn a backend language. For the most part, once you've learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React, that's a front end language. That's what you see on your screen. So when a user is like looking at their screen at your application, they're seeing the front end. But what we haven't learned yet is the back end. Now the back end is the stuff that the user does not see. The data, the storage, the user password and username and stuff that is hidden to the user's eye. This is where you're going to receive subscriptions or payments from your application and also have user authentication like login and signups. This is where it's made. So the top languages that you probably want to learn are MongoDB, Express, and Node.js. Now, you may say it's three languages. 
it's really more like one it's basically just mongodb express and node.js are kind of like ways of writing mongodb think of it like that so it's basically just mongodb it's a mix of three and this will really honestly take you two to three weeks to understand and then start applying so the next and final thing that you'll want to learn this is not really required but it's like adding sprinkles to a cake you know makes it better and honestly it is quite important if you want to be a good software developer that being learning apis github ba other backend languages reading books stuff like that just to really really understand everything now apis you'll probably learn within the backend the development courses however however getting a full understanding of apis is very key because it's everywhere in software development and if you don't know what an api is all it is is fetching data from a company that provides it to you and using it in your own application let's say you want to start a gps app like google maps but maybe you have something different in it right one option is to put satellites in the air and take a picture of the entire world and get the streets that way now that would be rather expensive right costs you millions of dollars on the other hand what you could do is pay two cents per customer to Google to use their maps within your application in which you could design it and change it up obviously and use it that way. That's what an API is and that's why APIs are so powerful and why you need to learn it. That's really it, simple, right? It'll take you a couple of months, some people less, some people more, but this is a framework that I wish I had and I hope brought value to you. My name is Zazar and I'll see you in the next video, peace.